Hey guys, welcome back. So today I got a bit of a vintage generator here and I say vintage, it's not ancient. It is, um, from what I can tell on the date code, it is about 30 years old. And uh, you can kind of see right there, 910830. So August 30th, 1991 is when this was built. And uh, you know, this machine looks pretty complete. It's a Dana Winco generator, which uh, is a decent brand. And, you know, there's no obvious signs of abuse on this machine. The, I think the biggest thing I see here is just that the, the spark arrester is missing and there's actually a loose bolt here on the exhaust. But other than that, it looks to be pretty good. Um, I don't know much about Winco generators, but I know they're supposed to be pretty li reliable, so I'm hoping that's the case here. The fuel tank, surprisingly, looks really good. I mean, some old gas, but it doesn't really smell. And, uh, you know, I've worked on much younger generators that have terrible looking fuel tanks. So, uh, overall, I think this thing's in pretty good shape, at least on the surface. Uh, I did check the oil. It is actually overfull, uh, but clean. So, you know, overall, I think this thing has a lot of potential. So, you know, I'm going to get you set up in a stand and I just want to get started by checking the basics. And if everything looks good, maybe I'll just skip ahead, bring it outside, throw a little starting fluid in it and see what it does. So I have a compression tester, but you know, it's kind of misleading because most of these have compression release valves. So the best you're going to see usually is about 60 PSI. Um, if you don't have a compression tester, the other thing you can do is just pull the cord. It should be hard to pull at one point, which is the compression stroke. And then once you clear that, it'll be easy like that. So we got compression. That's the first thing. Okay, I've got the spark tester connected and the ignition on. I'm gonna check the spark. Okay, good. We've got spark. This fuel line is absolutely petrified. So that will have to be replaced at some point. All right, so it took a while to get all the gas out. You might be wondering why I'm holding this upside down and it's really just to show you that line that's right there, that's water. So most likely there is water in that carb. So I'm just gonna pull this nut out, see if I can't drain out what's in the carb. Okay, well, I would have expected something to come out, so I don't know if that's good or bad. Probably bad. That might be broken. Yep, that one's definitely broken. So that could be an issue. So as you can see, that bolt is broken in there. Um, maybe not the end of the world. I see there are threads here. So you could put one of those kind of older style screw in mufflers if, uh, if that's what it comes down to. But I'm gonna work on that a little bit, see if I can't get that screw to turn out.
Okay, it took some doing, but I ended up just drilling this out and tapping it. It was a quarter inch, 22 threads per inch. Uh, it was kind of a slow process, so I spared you guys uh, quite a bit of that. But um, anyway, we got the problem taken care of. So I do need to order a new one of these bolts to properly secure that muffler. All right, so I got that shoulder bolt ordered and uh, it's gonna be probably about a week before I get it. So I might as well pull this carb off and uh, get it cleaned up and just see if I need anything to get this to work. Yep, gonna need a new one of these or at least take this outer part off. You know, this is all deteriorated, pretty typical. Um, you know, of course that could get sucked into the engine, but I guess in this case, the paper filter underneath will catch it, but it's not serving any purpose now, that's for sure. Got to start by pulling out this main jet. This here is just the needle. You can see there's a bunch of uh, crud on it. And I can't see it, but there should be a pin in there, which we need to remove before we can get this top off. So let me try to crack that free. I want to save this gasket if I can. It's like half of it stuck to the top, the other half to the bottom. Not bad. Could be a lot worse. So, I mean, right away I see on the bottom here it kind of feels like clay or sand. Not really sure, but whatever it is doesn't belong. So I'm just gonna scrape that out and put that in the ultrasonic like that. The uh, needle, let's get the float out and see what it looks like. Needle and float, actually, needle looks okay. And the float, still floating. No uh, gas inside the float. Now this gasket here isn't in great shape. You can see it's missing a piece right in the back. 
it's not a huge deal, but if you tip the generator sideways in such a way that it gas goes over there, it will leak out of there. So this here, I think is the last jet. I think it's just an air fuel mix, probably for like a pilot jet, but not really sure. Anyway, I'm gonna turn it in, count how many turns it is, so I know where to set it later. It is half, one, half, one, it was one and a half. That's it. I don't think anything else comes out of this thing. So yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna scrape that clean, put it in the ultrasonic and uh, see what comes out. So just one thing to add here. I'm not familiar with these flow jet carbs. This is actually the first one I've taken apart. And there is a jet down here, which didn't seem that clogged. There was some of that sandy stuff in there. And then there's four little holes here. And then this tube goes all the way down. So all that's definitely clear now. And, you know, I cleaned up everything with a little bit of carb spray and I was about ready to wash this. And then I realized this here is where the fuel goes. And then it goes through the jet, which I took out. That was all filled with sand. So the jets didn't look that clogged, but because of whatever this stuff was that was down here, the fuel could not get to the main jet. And I'm sure that's why it wasn't running. At least I hope it is. So overall, it cleaned up pretty good. Uh, this one really wasn't that bad. It was just contaminated with that sand or whatever that material was. And, um, you know, of course it was blocking that hole down there. And even though the main jet wasn't clogged, there's no way gas would have got to it. And even if it had, this needle had a lot of junk on it, a lot of that sand. So um, it would not have run well. Anyway, I'm just gonna put it back together and um, go from there. Set it back to one and a half. We can tune it later. I don't actually know if that's right, but that's what it was set at. Okay, not too tight. Just snug it up. And then um, this here is basically adjustable. So you get the main jet in there. And newer carbs, that's it. However much fuel goes through that opening, that's what you get in the carb. With this, you can turn this down, which drops this pin into that hole. So the further it goes down, the more it restricts the fuel. And then of course you turn it counterclockwise and it allows more fuel through that main jet. I wish they still had these on most uh, new stuff because they jet it so lean that a lot of times carburetor is almost perfect, but it's running lean. 
and there's really no easy way to fix that. All right, that's it. So just getting ready to reconnect everything and the one thing I haven't figured out is this little spring here. Usually there's a separate hole where that goes into here on the throttle lever, uh, but there is no such hole. So I'm gonna to try to put it in the same hole as the governor arm. almost forgot. I think this went something like that. Maybe. So besides being petrified, I'm sure there's a lot of that crap that was in the carburetor in that fuel line as well as the fuel filter. So I am gonna just put a new line and filter on now before opening that fuel valve. So I'm sure the original spark plug actually looks halfway decent, but you know, I have an NGK just sitting around, unused, brand new, almost. So I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, new bolt arrived. It's this one here on the left. Uh, it was only $10, which isn't that much, but when you consider I only spent 45 for the whole machine, it adds up quick. So um, yeah, let's get this thing bolted on and see if it'll run. Okay, good, I think we're ready for contact. Let's get this thing outside and see what it can do.
overall, not too bad for a 30 year old, almost 30 year old generator. You know, it started in just a few pulls, could turn the choke off right away. It ran actually pretty well. I did try adjusting the jetting, but I found where it was when I first started it was pretty much perfect. So that was about two and three quarters turns out on the main jet and a turn and a half on the pilot jet. Now, uh, it makes power, which is good. And I did have to turn the governor spring up to get it to about 61 hertz, maybe somewhere in between 61, 62. And turned that space heater on, 1500 watts. And the engine speed definitely sagged quite a bit. You know, it went down to like 55, 56 hertz, which is a bit slow. And the voltage was around 109. So uh, not too happy about that. But you know, as far as I can see here, the, the governor linkage is hooked up properly. So, you know, maybe the engine's a little bit tired. I'm not really sure if there's any adjustments I can do on that. But, you know, I probably will load it up maybe to 3000 watts and see if it can at least maintain the 55 hertz, in which case, still not great. But, you know, what I don't want it doing is stalling with not even a 4,000 watt load, which is the rated load on this generator. So let me get one more space heater and we'll try it one more time at a 3,000 watt load and see what happens. Okay, so that was a bit disappointing. Under 3000 watt loads, the generator was heading to stall. You know, it was around 50 hertz, 49 hertz, 48 hertz, just dropping like a rock. So, you know, one thing I discovered is that while it was dropping, I tried to just hold the throttle open and I realized it was all the way open. Like even under a 1500 watt load, the throttle was open all the way. So she was given it all she had and uh, it just couldn't couldn't power it. So, you know, a uh, 1500 watt load requires about two or three horsepower and a 3000 watt load, you know, it's probably around four or five horsepower and we're falling way short of the eight horsepower rated. So I wanna get it back in the garage, just do a compression test. Assuming that's okay, you know, maybe we're dealing with a carburation issue, so you know, I might look at one of those cheap clone carbs and just give that a try, see if we get any more uh, horses out of this. Okay, hopefully you guys can see that. Just gonna do a quick compression test. Okay, good. This has a compression release, so I would not expect to see more than 60. And in this case, we got about 62 PSI. So I don't suspect we have a compression issue here. I think what we're dealing with is a carburetor issue. So uh, I've already ordered a clone carb. It was only 18 bucks, so it'll be here in a few days. And uh, I'll just hook that up and turn you back on once we're ready to try another test. All right, so the new carburetor has been installed and I got the pilot jet at one and a half and the main jet at two turns out now there were some fitment issues which were expected from the reviews namely that the bolts up here are no longer quarter inch they're m6 so that's been installed uh, also it seemed a little bit taller it was kind of hard to squeeze it in uh, between you know the intake here and this bracket down here but I managed to get it to fit. Now, 
my confidence is actually pretty low that it's a carburetor issue and I'm leaning more towards a top end issue but I'm gonna start it and see if I can adjust the jets to run you know at its optimal setting and then I'll put a load on it and see what it does and just for reference this here is full throttle and that's idle so really what I'm looking for is when I put like a 1500 watt load on it I will I shouldn't see that going full throttle if it is then it can't keep up and of course if I put more load on it it's just gonna slow down until the engine stalls but you know I'm not gonna let it get to that point hopefully it runs well but you know I'm thinking well it's wishful thinking I think on my part most likely it's a top end issue but let's give it a try and see how it does Yeah, really no change. So I put 1500 watt load on it, it goes full throttle. And even with no load, the throttle's open quite a bit. You know, I tried tapping it with my hand to full open and there's really almost no response. So I'm thinking it's a top end issue, it's gotta be. And I'm leaning towards the exhaust valve as the issue, but I'm not 100% not sure. So. You know, unfortunately, I think I need to pull that, you know, pull that carburetor off, pull the head off, and get the valves out and kind of see what's going on. It could be valve clearance or maybe they're not seating right. That would kind of be the best case scenario or, you know, maybe there's something wrong with the piston and rings. But the fact that I don't see oil coming out of it and the compression numbers are pretty good, I'm leaning towards the exhaust valve just being tight and opening up a little bit too soon on the combustion stroke. Okay, so the valve clearances actually look pretty decent. Uh, the exhaust is about 10 thousandths and the intake's around seven. You know, I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be on this engine, but my concern was that the exhaust was too tight. And that's definitely not the case. So I don't think we have a valve clearance issue. It's definitely something else. So I'm gonna keep going until I find out what the problem is. All right, so the next easy test to do is a leak down test. I don't have one of those, but I do have a compression tester, which I've already used. But in this case, I'm using it a little differently. You know, I've put the hose in the spark plug hole. I've got both valves closed and I removed the oil dipstick. So what I'm going to do now is just pressurize the cylinder and see if air is coming out anywhere. And not to ruin the surprise, but I've already done it. And there is a definite problem. Let me show you. That's all coming from this intake. There shouldn't be, I mean, maybe there should be a little bit, but you know, I've done the same to the exhaust. There's nothing 
as well as the oil uh, dipstick hole, and there's nothing coming out of that either. So that tells me the exhaust valve is good, that the rings are good on the piston, but the intake valve, something's wrong. So head has to come off and the valve and seat need to be inspected. Okay, there we go. So this valve is the one I suspect. Actually, I don't suspect it, I know it for a fact. Now it's not loose, I can't turn it with my hands. So that tells me there's something, a defect in the valve on the underside or the seat. So the bore is in really good shape. piston too is nice and tight so I think the pistons fine the um, exhaust we know is good and the intake no obvious signs of any major problem so it probably just needs to be lapped yeah, that seat does look a little bit worn. So I'm sure that's all it is, just a bunch of hours on this engine. So let me get the valve springs out and get the valves out and get a, get a better look. Put a little bit of WD-40 on top to make a little pool. And you can see the intake one, the WD-40 disappeared and is coming out. Whereas the exhaust valve, completely dry. So that's kind of giving you maybe a better visual of what's going on here. So we already know it's leaking, but it's uh, at least testable before we put the whole thing back together if uh, the lapping did anything. All right, I do not have the proper tool for this. This is for overhead valves, which this is not. With that said, I can probably get the valve off either using this or a screwdriver, but I'm going to have to invest in the proper tool, most likely, to put it back together. Valve doesn't look too bad, actually. And uh, the seat doesn't look too bad either. Yeah, I double checked the clearance and it's right at five thou, which is the minimum. And I do see a little, maybe a little something there. So it's right at 5,000, it's supposed to be between five and seven. So I'm gonna lap that valve and it's probably gonna close up the clearance some even more. So most likely I'm gonna to have to grind a little bit off the valve stem. I'd like it to be probably around six, maybe even seven. 
because it's just gonna wear in more over time. So I don't wanna have it on the low side of the clearance. Probably the higher side would be a little better. I think we're onto something. It's no longer leaking down the valve stem or around the valve. And I got a little pool up here of WD-40, not even putting any pressure on it, and there's no spring holding it down. So I think our leaky valve is fixed. Now, I am gonna double check the valve clearance. I'm sure it's tighter than it was before. So it needs to be between five and seven thousandths. It was at five, I have a feeling that it's less now. All right, I've already checked five thousandths, it doesn't fit. This is three one thousandths, too big. And we got one and a half thousandths. Still, oh, wait a minute. Aha, let's try two one thousandths. And it's, it's about two one thousandths, so that's too tight. So I'm gonna take some material off that and we'll try it again. I was aiming for six, and it didn't take long to get there, so all I can say is don't overdo it. You can't put material back. So that's a six. There's some drag. It's a little light, but not too bad. And let's see, we'll try seven. And there's no clearance at seven, so. That's good, I was aiming for six. We probably got six and a half, uh, which is fine. You know, the valve's just gonna continue to wear in so that clearance will kind of diminish over time. All right, let's see if I can't use the wrong tool to get this back together. Okay, so just changing the oil here, and I uh, wasn't really planning on recording this, but it really needed it. And if you look closely, you can probably see there's some glitter in there. And uh, that's generally not a good thing. It's never a good thing. So I don't know if it's coming across too well, but you know that's aluminum chips in there, which tells me there is a decent amount of wear. Um, this oil, too, I think is quite old. This um, plug was pretty much painted in there. It was tough to get out. I don't think it's been removed since this block was painted, and God knows when that was. So um, I guess that's the first issue. The second one is, you know, the flywheel turns nicely when the piston's at the bottom or the top. But as the piston comes up or down the friction increases quite a bit to where it's really hard to get it to move. 
If I say really hard, it's not, I mean, you can still pull the recoil and it's fine, but it's noticeably more friction than there should be, in my opinion. Uh, I've never worked on this particular kind of engine before, so maybe it's normal, I don't know. But between the glitter and more friction between the piston and uh, the cylinder than I would expect, you know, those two things could uh, spell trouble. Uh, regardless, I'm going to put it together, see if we got the power back that we should have, and um, probably just run it for a bit, change the oil again, and see uh, how much glitter comes out. Okay, specs say to bring this to 165 inch-pounds. I'm going to start with 80 and then I'll do the final. Okay, there we go, 165. In case you're wondering, yes, I did paint all these parts red that I took off of it. It's probably putting the cart before the horse, but I'd rather do it while the parts are off than to take them off again and paint it later. Okay, uh, the rest you've seen me do already, so I'm just going to throw the exhaust and the uh, carburetor back on, and I will turn you back on outside. Okay, I'm ready to give this another try. I did put the original carburetor back on since it's a better fit, and I'm just going to restart it, uh, reset the governor speed. I did back it off, and just double check the jets. And once I get it all dialed in, I will try loading it up again with 3000 watts.
Okay, I'm at a loss. The compression, even before I fixed the valve, was pretty good. And after the valve, I did repressurize the cylinder. I didn't show you that, but there were no leaks. And I just did it again to make sure no leaks on the intake, exhaust, or the crankcase. So we got a new head gasket in there. I'm convinced the top end is sound. So that doesn't leave a whole lot really left. I know we have timing. I know we have spark. Um, carburation could be the issue, although we've already tried this clone car, but I put it back on again just to double check now that the valve's fixed. I'm going to leave the air filter off and that rules that out as a restriction and that we can also then see what's coming out of the crank vent. Uh, the muffler, uh, I don't think that's a restriction. None of the holes are blocked, you know, and I feel good flow coming out of that muffler. So um, I don't think that's it. I did also put the original spark plug back in. I don't think that'll make a difference, but I'm kind of uh, grasping at straws here. And lastly, the fuel. This could be it. And uh, I'm hoping it is, but I double checked the fuel level in the tank and it was near the bottom. It was probably right around there. And as you can see, the hose has to come up over the stator and the top of the hose is about right here. So the fuel must have just been barely trickling into that carburetor. So now I filled it up about halfway. So that should cure that problem. And I also tested the vent and that does seem a little restrictive. So I've loosened the cap and I'm just gonna run with it like that. And if none of this works, then I'm at a loss. Hopefully, hopefully it works. Otherwise, I might have to call it and defer to you guys on what I'm missing here. Okay, so here it goes. Last stitch effort. Uh, it's this or bust. Okay, that was a marginal improvement. Uh, the engine was able to at least maintain itself under a 3000 watt load, but with that said, it was, it was too slow and it was full throttle, you know, so there wasn't anything more uh, that could be done to get the speed up. Um, I've, I'm kind of fresh out of ideas here. I mean, I know it's an old engine. I don't know what it performed like when it was new, so maybe this is normal. Um, but I, I have trouble believing that. And, um, you know, I, I didn't do a compression test after I lapped the valve, so I just did one, and it came in at 70. I double-checked online what the cam design is to see if it had a compression release, and it doesn't, but I think it has something called an easy start lobe, which is kind of the same thing. And for those, you have to rotate the engine backwards to get an accurate number. So that's what I just did. And it came in at a little higher. Uh, it's at 80 PSI now. And although that might seem low, uh, this engine's only a six to one compression ratio. And, uh, you know, I think low to mid eighties is actually a pretty good number. Uh, I have nothing to compare it against, but that's uh, kind of what I would expect on, you know, an engine like this. So 
I'm not overly anxious to just tear the engine open when I'm getting good numbers. And I know I have a glitter problem, so the engine probably should be opened and that part replaced, but uh, that's not gonna solve the underlying power problem. So I'm not anxious to do that until I know how to restore power. And then I don't mind tearing it apart and doing what I need to to make this thing absolutely perfect. Anyway, this video is longer than, I, than it should be, so I'm gonna cut it here, and uh, hopefully one of you in the comments can tell me what I'm missing, and uh, maybe there'll be a part two. So, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.